So I want to take you back to your, your school days and I want you to have a look at the phone and just remember what, what comes into your head. Sadness. This was when, ah, uh, God, um, oh, you got me. Um, this was when I turned 13. Um, I'd been in a children's psychiatric unit for about a year. Um, and I'd sort of missed my first year of high school um, because bullying had led to um, an eating disorder. So I grew up in Hull, um, if you can't tell by my accent. Um, and, you know, I had a, an amazing family, uh, two older sisters and a brother. I was massively into sport, um, didn't really care what I ate, what I wore. If anything, you know, sometimes got mistaken for looking like a boy. And I was quite happy with that. I'd wear my shorts while all the girls wore like the gingham dresses. And then at about the age of um, 10, I, uh, I remember getting my hair cut. Sounds really bizarre, but I got it cut into a much more girly style. And I also started coming into my own um, in my skill set. You know, I was good at sport. I won everything at sports day. Um, I loved performing. Um, always got the school solo, uh, the main part in the plays. I was at the top of my class in maths, English. You know, I had a reading age of 16 at the age of 10. Um, I was doing well, I was doing really well, and then that's when it all kind of went wrong, really. I think, unfortunately, the green-eyed monster set in for a lot of people, um, who I thought were my friends, and um, life sort of just turned on its head. And I remember thinking, I didn't understand why people were, were treating me this way, and it, and it just started with name-calling, with being excluded in the canteen, um, you know, the lads were always my good friends, but I felt as though I couldn't hang out with them because I'd be judged. And I remember thinking the less of me there was, the less of me there was for them to hurt. And hence the anorexia started. Um, I tried to hide it very much at first, um, but fortunately, me and mum and dad are very close and they cottoned on to it straight away. I remember going to a doctor and being told I didn't weigh, I wasn't too, uh, low in weight enough to be anorexic. Um, so I was sort of shoved out of the, the doctor's office, went back to school and things just progressively got worse. Um, and it was the only thing that I could control because I couldn't control the bullying. Um, one thing I always wished, and it sounds really bizarre, but I always wished they'd just beat me up. Um, because there was no physical scars, I didn't have a way of explaining or articulating what was going on with the mental abuse and the mental bullying. And again, the only way I felt I could control it was within myself and the less of me there was physically and the more weight I lost, you know, the less of me there was to hate and hurt. It left me feeling like a shell. The bullying knocked all sense of self-worth out of me it knocked all self-confidence out of me. It made me depressed. The bullying almost ruined my life. I wish that I had spoken up. Um, I wish that I'd called out the bullies. I wish that I'd had the strength to speak to my family or my teachers. Uh, an anti-bullying amb ambassador back when I was younger could possibly have changed my whole life. Sounds very dramatic, I know I'm an actress, but it's true. Um, it could have saved me a lot of heartache um, and it could have stopped things a lot sooner. And I just hope and pray that more people step up to, uh, to the bullies and are there to support those who need them. In the UK, 10 million children are going back to school over half of them will be affected by bullying. You can change that by helping us train an anti-bullying ambassador in every school. Here's how you can help. Text ANTI15 followed by £1, £2, £3, £4, £5 or £10 to 70070 and show your support online. This campaign is run by the Diana Award Charity.